Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. First of all, I'd like to give honor and praise to Christ Jesus, our King, for the honor and the privilege. It's indeed a privilege to be standing here in front of you at Hither Green Baptist Church on this Good Friday to deliver the word of God. Hallelujah. I decrease, as the lady just said, you know, it's all about Jesus. I decrease whilst Christ Jesus increases. I'd like to thank Reverend Honesty and Pastor Armand and to the whole congregation, respectively, at Hibber Green and Brown Hill Baptist Church as well. Right, M many have noted that apart from the regular churchgoers, some people may only attend church at Christmas and for the Easter period. Now, God, he welcomes us all with open arms, regardless of when we attend. He wants us, the body of Christ, the members to come together in unity. After all, each member of the body of Christ is as valuable as the other. The hands play a part, and so do the feet. Other parts of the body not more precious than the other. Let us remember today what our precious Jesus body went through this Good Friday when he was nailed to the cross. In John chapter 13, it was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Jesus predicted his betrayal in verse 21. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. And indeed, it was Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. Jesus also predicted the disciple Peter's denial of him. And so it was that Peter denied Jesus three times before the rooster crowed. Judas betrayed Jesus by disclosing his whereabouts for 30 pieces of silver. Judas betrayed Jesus for money, but before he did this, he was shown such great humility when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, expecting them to show the same servanthood to others. The same humility. However, Satan had got into Jesus, got into Judas, excuse me. Verse 18, Jesus states, I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. But this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. As painful as it was, scripture had to be fulfilled. We entered into this Holy Week one week before Easter Sunday, where we celebrate Palm Sunday, the day, the, the day Jesus led a victorious parade into Jerusalem. Yesterday, Maundy Thursday, we commemorate the Last Supper, 
when Jesus brought in communion. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 26, it is written, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. Today, Good Friday, we, we may even ask, what was so good about it? When Jesus, an innocent man, was condemned and brutally whipped and led to the cross to be crucified. It was indeed good for what our precious Jesus did for us when he died on the cross, died for our sins. Praise God. Hallelujah. The night before Jesus was crucified, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He took Peter, Peter James, and John further into the garden with him. Now, Jesus is deeply distressed about what lays ahead. You can't really blame him. He says, the sorrow in my heart is so great that it almost crushes me. Jesus' human nature is shown in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, the verses 36 to 56, where he asks for the cup of su suffering to be taken away from him. But even though Jesus had asked this, he still wanted the Father's will to be done in spite of the pain and the suffering and death that he would go through. This is reflected in the verse, yet not what I want, but what you want. When Jesus asked the disciples three times to keep watch, but they were unable to do so, must have been truly lonely and frustrating for him, especially as he was, you could imagine, going through these emotions. Jesus asked Peter if he could not stay awake for one hour, then warns them not to fall into temptation as the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. It was a large crowd with swords and clubs that arrived with Judas, the betrayer. They were sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now, the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 38, it reads, Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Why, Lord? Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. In the book of Matthew, chapter 27, it is written that when morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, my Lord, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, 
was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Now we see how Judas had become remorse, how he became remorseful in the terrible betrayal of his master. Now what may have seemed good to him before had now become the harsh reality of blood money for a righteous and innocent man. Such, when you think about it, it's such a difference to the woman who came to Jesus whilst he was in Bethany with an alabaster jar of expensive poor perfume, pouring it at, on his head. She didn't think that the oil was too expensive to anoint Jesus with. She had good intentions. Now, have any of you ever been, I'm sure, maybe it has happened, been betrayed by someone who you felt you were so close with? You know, you felt you were the best of friends or even a family member, whoever it may be. If the answer is yes, you will know how painful this is. Yet alone what our precious Jesus went through. Now, just as Jesus had predicted, he was betrayed by Judas and denied by Peter three times. Jesus was arrested by the detachment of soldiers and the Jewish officials. They bound him where he was brought, my Lord, our precious Jesus, first to Annas, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. Now here, Jesus was questioned about his teaching and the disciples. He was slapped in the face by one of the officials for talking the truth to the high priest. Early morning, the Jewish leaders took Judas, took Jesus, forgive me, from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor Pilate. After questioning Jesus, Pilate found no basis for a charge against him. He just couldn't find anything wrong. I mean, you know, couldn't find anything wrong at all. Pilate went out to the Jews, gathered there and asked. And in the book of John, chapter 18, verse 39, it informs us, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, no, not him. Give us Bar 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 Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Wow. Now Jesus, he was flogged. A crown of thorns put on his head, clothed in a purple robe. He was continually mocked and slapped in the face. Hail, king of the Jews. <laughs> they shouted, they laughed. Pilate came out to the Jews again, still finding no basis for a charge against Jesus. But the chief priest and their officials saw Jesus and shouted, crucify, my Lord, crucify. Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jews were not allowing it. In the book of John, chapter 19, verse 14, it says, here is your king, Pilate said to them, but they shouted, take him away. Take him away, crucify him. Jesus was whipped and whipped, raw and bloody on that early Friday morning. 
taken on the longest route so we could see him way down by, oh my Lord, way down by the heavy weight of the cross that he had to carry. Now, when we go through trials and tribulations, people say that we all have a cross to bear. But we can never come remotely close to what Jesus went through. Never. It's impossible. Jesus was laid on the cross, spikes through the base of his hands, hanging by nails, bleeding in agonizing pain, mocked and insulted, his agony and death being watched by many as they laughed and taunted him. There were two criminals being crucified on either side of Jesus. And still, one mustered the strength to mock and taunt him. My word. Crucified at Golgotha, fastened to the cross, was the sign of Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. In the book of John, chapter 19, verse 28, later knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be filled, fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it. Put the sponge on a, a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. What a mighty God we serve. Bless his holy name. We thank Jesus for what he done for us at Calvary. He died for our sins. When you really think about it, wow, it's, wow. I just can't even find the words right now to thank the Lord for what he done for us. That's why it's so important to spread the word of God. Save the lost souls. We're living in perilous times. And on this Good Friday, as we reflect on what Christ Jesus did for us, the pain and the torture that he went through, No matter what it is that you may be going through, just lay it at the cross. Is it sickness that you're going through? Cancer, diabetes, whatever it may be, just stand on the word of God. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 24, it reads... He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been healed. Believe it. You've been healed. You better believe it. Because God is not a God who can lie. His word cannot return unto him void. Never. And never forget one more thing, ever, never forget, that we serve a risen king. Hallelujah. We serve a risen king. The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 33. We are going up to Jerusalem, he said, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So my dear brothers and sisters, I just want to say to you today, if you're feeling discouraged, if you're feeling disheartened, Please remember what Jesus did for you when he was crucified. Where in the book of Psalms, chapter 22, verses 1 to 2, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish. 
My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Let us never forget how much Jesus done for us. Never, let us never forget how much God loves us. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 6, it reads, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Let's be joyful. Let's praise God. Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Jesus laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brother. Hallelujah. Let us walk in love. Let us walk in forgiveness. Let us walk in unity. Hallelujah. Let us give Christ Jesus our burdens as he's willing to carry them. It's so easy to worry about our health to worry about money, to worry about our jobs. To, we can even worry about worrying, my Lord. But when we do this, we are doubting God, okay? We are not believing his word, okay? Will God answer my prayer? Or maybe he will not. Let us not be a doubting Thomas, for it would be like we're crucifying Jesus again. We have a Lord and Savior that paid the price for us. The book of John chapter 3 verse 16, it reminds us for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Everlasting life, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So today, my dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate Jesus throughout this holy week, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, Holy Monday, where Mary anoints Jesus with the perfume and Judas reproaches her, Holy Tuesday, where Jesus announces the betrayal of one of the twelve and the denial, even, and the denial of Peter. Holy Wednesday, where Judas Iscariot betrays Jesus. Holy Thursday, Jesus institutes the Eucharist and the priestly order. Here to Good Friday, the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ where we will be celebrating the Easter visual on Holy Saturday and Christ's resurrection on Easter Sunday. Hallelujah. We have much to celebrate. We have much to give God thanks for. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So my brothers and sisters, this is not too long a message, but I hope it gets here to your heart. Let us lay those burdens down. Whatever you are carrying at the moment, lay them down. Christ did not go on that cross for nothing. There's nothing impossible for God. He's the great healer. He's the great physician. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's a provider. He's our everything. Nothing is impossible for God. Okay? Hallelujah. So just believe. Just believe that whatever you do from now to the coming week, that you are victorious in Christ Jesus. You are victorious. Because for we serve a king who took all of the burdens at the cross. And it is finished. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Praise God. Amen.